Succession planting is an essential part of our strategy to grow a lot of food and to have a continuous harvest from our small garden. Today I'll show you what we're planting now in summer as we harvest crops that were started in the spring. I'll also share some succession planting ideas you might want to try in your garden. Succession planting is simply when you plant a new crop to replace the previous crop after it's been harvested. As a rule, to minimize pest and disease issues, I plant a second crop that's unrelated to the first. For example, here in this bed, I planted peas, radishes, and spinach in early March under cover. In May, when the radishes and spinach were at their peak, I planted butternut squash and two biodegradable cow pots in another area of the garden. And then in June, after harvesting all of the radishes and spinach, I transplanted the butternut squash along with the cow pots into the front of this bed. As you can see, it will be time to remove the pea vines very soon. After removing them, I'll train the squash plants up the trellises. According to the seed packet, these plants should bear fruit 75 days after planting, but it will almost certainly take longer than that in our shaded garden. Even so, with our first frost date about 100 days away, the plants are far enough along that they should have plenty of time to produce fruit before the first frost. My next example of succession planting once again follows up an early season planting with winter squash, this time here in this bed. I planted beets, carrots, parsnips, lettuce, and spinach under cover here in early March. We've already harvested the lettuce, spinach, and parsnips, as well as some of the carrots and beets. In early June, I planted acorn squash and two cow pots in another part of the garden. Later in the month, after harvesting enough of the early season crops to make room for them, I transplanted the acorn squash into this bed. My hope is that we'll harvest enough of the remaining crops over the next few weeks to make room for the squash plants as they grow. I'll train the plants from here to the north side of the bed where I'll install a trellis for them to climb. With about 122 days between planting and our first frost, the acorn squash should have time to produce fruit even with less than optimal sun. Continuing with my theme of succession planting with squash, I planted pak choy in mid-March under cover in this bed and followed it up with patty pan squash that I started in a cow pot in June. Soon I'll harvest this garlic and this volunteer potato to make more room for the patty pan. Patty pans typically start producing fruit about 50 days after planting, so there should be plenty of time to get a good harvest from this plant. The last example of succession planting I've already completed is here in this bed where I followed up an early season lettuce crop with vegetable amaranth. Vegetable amaranth is also known as Chinese spinach and callaloo and is one of our favorite warm weather greens. Unlike other amaranth varieties, the leaves are tender and are a great spinach substitute during the heat of summer. These plants came up as volunteers in our grow room and I transplanted them into the garden in late June. Now let's take a look at where I plan to do our next round of succession planting. These purple viking potatoes were planted here in April but it doesn't look like they'll be ready to harvest until later in July or maybe even August, which will be the perfect time to start some fall crops. One of my goals this year is to have more root crops in our fall garden. So I plan to plant carrots, parsnips, turnips, and rutabagas after harvesting the potatoes. Now let's talk about some crops you may want to consider for succession planting in your garden at this time of year. When weighing your options, it's important to pick crops that will do well in your current weather conditions and for the next couple of months. It's also important to pick crops that will mature and be ready to harvest well before your first frost. If in doubt, most seed packets include days to maturity. In our case, highs are mostly in the 80s and we have about 100 days before our first frost. If we had the space, we could plant Swiss chard, beets, carrots, bush beans, malabar spinach, and cucumbers. If we lived in a cooler climate with highs mostly in the 70s, we could also succession plant lettuce, radishes, pak choy, peas, turnips, and maybe even spinach. And if we lived in a warmer climate with a much later first frost date, or even no frost date, we might be succession planting crops like cantaloupe and other small melons, as well as some varieties of tomatoes and corn. Next month I hope to bring you another succession planting video as we change our focus to planting specifically for a fall garden. I'd also like to hear from you. Please let me know in a comment below what you're succession planting in your garden. Again, when deciding what to succession plant, make sure to grow with the season. And also make sure to plant crops that will have more than enough time to produce a harvest before your first frost. If in doubt, days to maturity can usually be found on seed packets.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you really have to. Mm -hmm.